bleed red. We all breathe the same air. And whether we like it or not, we all come from the same human family. So we are all connected one way or another, all the way down through the lineage of Adam and Eve, our first human family. Now, what is the main thing that we should notice about the human race? The thing that I notice the most, and especially in these days and times, is that we're all stuck here on this planet where if someone was to look at us from a distance, like if there were some aliens out there checking our planet out, they would see one big unhappy family. They would see the largest dysfunctional family ever in existence. I thought that was mine up until I read this. Everybody fighting, everybody arguing, everybody killing one another over what? Money, power, control over land and its oil reserves, all of that stuff. None of us is getting the upper hand on the situation where they can do any, any good. We see it in politics every day, don't we? Congress fighting between one another. The Democrats against the Republicans, each trying to get their way, where they're both willing to let the people suffer in the wake of their squabbling back and forth. We watched that happen over this last year, didn't we? We watched the Democrats and the Republicans. We saw the Republicans going after the president. They were just having a big old mess, and they would rather watch the people suffer as the government closed down while they're squabbling between each other. We had Obama busy when he was running for, for the office. He was busy trying to degrade Romney, which didn't take too much. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? That was a little political, wasn't it? <laughs> so Obama was degrading Romney in, in, in his past. He was going into his past in order to convince the public that he was not the one to lead the nation as his next president. One big, ugly mud fight was going on. Slinging mud at each other to their own disgrace. One thing was for sure. If there was any aliens out there watching us, I believe that they would see an entire world in chaos. And I believe that they would see the entire human race as one. They wouldn't take sides. They would see us all as the problem. So, I believe that we can safely say that there is respectively no harmony in the world. Is there? Is it a wonder that the world is in general, does not get along. We can't even get along with our own people right here in this nation, in this country. That's why we have certain groups of people that have fractured off from the mainstream of the population, have formed their own itinerary and belief structure, rejecting all the normal paths leading to community. This is normally accomplished by one or more charismatic leaders that people are willing to listen to. The most dangerous thing about this is that people are gullible. People are gullible. If they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, they'll listen to anybody else that has that charismatic personality. And that's why it's so important to study the Word of God to attain Sunday, to attend Sunday services in order to get spiritually fed. That's why it's so important to come together corporately and learn what the Bible says together so that we don't go off interpreting the Bible just any old way. Ladies and gentlemen, this stuff happens. I'm sorry, excuse me. run into there. People come down. I can't tell you how many times I'll be in here teaching Bible study or whatever, and somebody will come in here and have some way off the wall belief that has nothing to do, way off. The Bible has nothing to say about that, what they're trying to follow through with. And I'll sit there and I'll try to take the time to explain, you know, to break it down for them. But you see, if they do not know what the Bible says, if they do not and if they have not given their hearts to Christ and they don't know him as Lord and Savior, what happens? 
They've been living on their own understanding. They've been living on their own understanding and they come up with these wild doctrines. It's just what they go and does all the time. I'll ask them questions like, people often, do you go to church? And they'll look at me and say, oh, I, I go to church. Really? I learned one lady yesterday, she said, I'm very spiritual. My red flag went up. You're very spiritual, huh? She says, oh yeah. She says, I meditate all the time. Brings me closer to God. I said, really? I said, that's good. I said, what do you do? What, what do you believe about Jesus Christ? Oh, he's, Jesus is just one of the enlightened ones. What are the enlightened ones? You know, what do you do with Jesus says it ends up as I'm the way, the truth, and the life? Nobody comes to the Father but by me. I mean, what do you mean I'm one of the enlightened ones? That's a, it's just crazy. We need to understand this is all the stuff that's going on out there. Old belief structures that people start bringing up, and, and they're following them even today. They just newly package them. So you got to watch out what it is that you're hearing, and what it is that you're make sure that you know your word so that you can refute anything out there. Amen? Amen? Now, when people decide to go off on their own, what happens? They begin to put together their own theology, leaning on their own understanding. And it's no wonder nobody is there to explain scripture to them. Nobody is there to help them understand they've left the main street. So people separate themselves from the body of Christ. They go their own way, creating their own cultic religions. Coming up with numerous sinful practices that are completely against what scripture teaches. Think about it. You know, you remember David Koresh? He was of the Branch Davidians of Waco, Texas. Do you remember that whole situation back a few years back? This man separated himself with a bunch of his own followers, forming his own cult, and began to practice things that were entirely against scripture. But what he did, you know, he said he was one of those people that started focusing on the book of Revelation. Now, you, it's okay if you want to study the book of Revelation, but you need to make sure that the Holy Spirit is helping you get to this, that you're being trained properly. Because he focused on the, on the book of Revelation and came up with his own doctrine of what the seven seals was all about. He's trying to tell people this and that while he's practicing all kinds of other stuff. He formed his own cult, began to practice those things. The first thing that he did was he became self-absorbed. Self-absorbed. He would claim to be Jesus Christ. Now you know when somebody's walking around here saying, ah, Jesus Christ. What are you smoking? And you're on something. Something, right? I mean, because you know, if you say to Jesus Christ, what are you actually saying? You're God. That's what you're saying. That delusion almost always leads to the belief that, that he can do whatever he pleased with those who chose to follow him. Why not? If he was Jesus Christ, then he believed that he was God. And if you follow that story back then, he was demanding that the men of the church that were following him, that were married, had to hand their wives over to him so that he could have sexual relations with them. And not only that, he also began to tell have their underage girl that he wasn't supposed to have anything to do with, but he had just come into them also. So he had messed himself completely up breaking every rule practically that the Bible has set for him. Why? Because he thought he was the beginning and the end. Isn't it? Now we also have the Heaven's Gate people. This is led by a guy named Marshall Applewhite in San Diego, California. Any of you people that are a little older, you might remember this guy. He began, to, he, had, he, he began to mix religion with the belief in the UFO phenomenon. He rejected scripture as God's eternal truth and started his own cult religion. Because Applewhite would not put his faith in the word of God, he separated himself and came up with his own belief structure after he suffered a heart attack uh, in, in the 1970s where he had a near-death experience. Now, he came to believe that he and his nurse 
were the two witnesses spoken about in Revelation 11, 3. Now, come on now. You gotta sit there, if you, if you study the scriptures with any kind of, of intelligence, you gotta understand that the two witnesses, first of all, how can you think that you're the two witnesses? If you study, you find out that the two witnesses are something, somebody that are, that, that, that are coming from heaven. Okay, who they are. You also find out that the uh, uh, apple wife, uh, I'm sorry, the two witnesses don't show up until the tribulation period. Because it talks about them showing up uh, when there was 1,260 days, 12 and over three and a half years. We know that you have three and a half years into the tribulation period. So we're not in the tribulation period, so how can you think that he's one of the witnesses? Or that they were the two witnesses? If Apple White would have stayed in the Word of God and not separated himself from the body of Christ, he would not have become responsible for the 39 deaths of those people who committed suicide because he told them that they needed to shed their human bodies in order to gain access to an alien spaceship that followed close behind the comet Halibab. Look, if you bring somebody that comes to me and says, look, Tony, look, we get ready to go on and get on the spaceship called oh, Alibaba. Um, but we all have to die first. No problem, Apple White. Let me go ahead and pack my bag. I'll see you on the bus. And I'm gone. I'm going to get away from this guy as far as I can possibly go. Amen. He's trying to get you to give up your life. Don't you give up your life for no nonsense like that. Amen? Stay in the Word of God. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Just because Pastor Tony stands up here and teaches you different things, don't take my word for it. I'm teaching what the Bible says. Check it. Be like the, uh, Lord, what they were back in Paul's day. When they would check what Paul said by Scripture and see it to make sure that what he was talking about was true. Amen? Can you see the danger of trying to be a lone wolf? When we separate ourselves from the rest of the body of Christ, when we try to distance ourselves from the church for whatever reason, we're, we're setting ourselves up to Satan to have his way with us. We need to remember what 1 Peter 5 8 says. Be a sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. When a lion seeks for its prey, what does it look for? He looks for the weak. He looks for the injured and the young. He looks for the one that is lagging behind, the one that is separated from the rest of the group. Because he knows that any of the herd that is alone is probably easy thing. Amen? Amen? When a person is off by himself, he knows that they are in an unhealthy mindset. Angry at the world because someone had insulted them here in the church. And what might be that insult? Let's think about it. I've watched them. I've watched them come around. Might be that you've been identified as one of those brothers that likes to use of that spiritual approach when you're out prowling for that Christian system that you know won't have a thing to do with you unless she believes that you are a wonderful, spiritually strong brother in Christ, setting the bar for all other Christian brothers. Let me tell you something. It happens every week. I get somebody come to me and sit down and say, that's Tony, I need to talk to you about something. I said, what is that? Well, you know, I'm single. I, I'm trying to... I'm trying to spend some time with this brother. And he came and he told me how spiritual he was and, and this and that. And then we were spending some time and he said, Oh, sister, why don't you come on up to my apartment and we'll, we'll be great. <laughs> we'll read the Bible together. <laughs> then they get up there, man, and, 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 and brother so-and-so then turned into brother octopus. <laughs> Hands all over the place. They come down past it. What do I do with them? I'm okay to keep him. Get rid of that one. He got something wrong. He got something going on. Got to watch out for that. 
You know, because they're out there. They got brothers that are out there that do stuff like that. Don't they know that they're going to be held responsible? They're going to be held responsible for that stuff. And I know that your sisters get all free. You know, I don't know how you are. You know, I'm saying, I love Jesus. Let me go ahead and buy these new clothes. I love Jesus. Is that showing or not? And, and they ain't going like this. Is that short enough? No, they're going like this. Is this short enough? You gotta watch out. Listen, it's your responsibility to keep it straight, keep it real. You know, you don't want to be out there trying to get your brothers to love back to you. You know, every man in here got red blood running through his veins. We're all men, amen? You don't want Pastor Monk. I got a piece of work today. I got time. <laughs> you just never know. You know, we're all men. Something comes walking by and you. We've got to be careful. So ladies, keep it, keep it real. Keep it. You know, put, some, put some water on that flame. You know, try, to, try, to, try to help your brothers out <laughs> a little bit. Amen? So everybody, all of us are going to have to achieve. We're going to all be held responsible for what it is that we do. Don't use your spiritual spirituality to try to, to, try to take somebody out. Just so that you can hear it. When we're up there and we're prodding around, trying to take somebody under their, into our confidence, and we mess around and use them. Thank you. So you're out there trying to do it, you're going to have to stand in front of the Lord, amen? We all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Besides all that, you don't want to be responsible. You, know, you don't want to be responsible for ruining the beautiful gift of uh, one of our sister's innocence. That was supposed to be for the man that God has provided for her, amen? When you do that, you're taking something that doesn't belong to you. Okay. Now listen, church, don't let a little argument chase you away from your true family. And I'm talking about the family of God, the body of Christ. Don't find yourself secluded, learning on your own, or I'm sorry, leaning on your own understanding. Keep yourselves plugged into the body of Christ. Remember, Jesus says that we can do nothing without him. We are completely spiritually bankrupt when we disconnect ourselves from the source of our strength and our power. When you don't come to church, when you try to stay away from church, come out. Ah, I, can, I, can, I can learn just sitting up here in the living room drinking my Budweiser and watching Joel Hall sing. You know, doing your church on TV. No, 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 no. That isn't the way that it works. In fact, let me tell you something. Have you ever thought about the fact that Jesus not only wants you in church because that's where you need to stay plugged in, but he wants you in church because you have something to offer other people. It isn't just about all of us coming in there and taking. My brothers over here, all of us, we went through life, haven't we? We went through life. We went through some hard times. We learned a lot out of that, didn't we? We know the steps to take and what wants not to take. How do you know that God doesn't want you to interact with somebody else, to tell them, to teach them, to show them and share with them your experience in life to keep them from going the same way? I know for a fact that that's the reason why I'm down here. All the messiness that I have did, man, let me tell you something. God picked me up, cleaned me off, and set me right back down here so that I can share it with you. Amen? Amen. Nothing is by accident. You are not here by accident. Amen? You're here for a reason. We need to always remember that. That's why Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared, prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. You see, all of us have a different path to walk. And as we walk in the good works that God has prepared beforehand for us, he has given one person a set of good works to walk in and another person a different set. 
And then when we all come together, corporately in congregation, we get a chance to hear from other brothers and sisters about what they have learned on their journey. And then we get to share with them what has happened on our journey. And hopefully we will all be able to learn from each other, from one another. Amen? So remember, church, no man is an island. If we're truly saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, we will not want to pull apart from God's heavenly family. We will not want to separate ourselves from the community. The only time we separate ourselves from the community of God is because we get lazy. We don't want to get up and get dressed. I don't want to get up and brush my tooth. Uh, my teeth. In my case, I don't want to get up and pull my teeth out of the uh, out of the glass. I don't want to do that. If we get lazy, we don't want to do what we need to do. We need to get up out of that bed, comb your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face, and get on down here and share with the body of Christ, part of your family. And that is the church that Jesus Christ has been building for us for the last 2,000 right attitude and the right desire to fit in with the body of Christ. See, we will enjoy all of the wonderful blessings that come with his protection and his grace.